Hello everyone, it's Dr. Sam. I'd like to welcome you to my Eye Clarity Podcast. This is a show that offers cutting edge information on how to improve your vision and overall wellness through holistic methods. I so appreciate you spending part of your day with me. If you have questions, you can send them to hello at drsamburn.com. Now to the latest Eye Clarity episode. want to take a question. This is from Jared and he is dealing with halos around lights. He also has blurred vision. He seems like his eyes are getting worse and worse. And he also has uh, a significant floaters and he went to his doctor and he was diagnosed with something called posterior vitreous detachment. And he's also got dry eye. And Jared also writes that he has had LASIK surgery about five years ago. And at first the surgery was really, really good, but now he needs glasses both at distance and near, and he's struggling. Well, you know, I talk a bit about eye surgeries and, you know, the more you avoid eye surgeries, I think the better it is, unless you really have to get it. Cataract surgery would be the one that I would say is a pretty safe, successful surgery. So with LASIK surgery, we're changing the refractive error in the eyeball, but many times because there is a source or a cause of the prescription in the eyeball, and that is based on mental habits and emotional habits, anyway, reasons why we develop a prescription and There's the body prescription and there's the eye prescription. And many times, even though you do LASIK surgery and it fixes the prescription in the eye, the prescription in the body wins out. And this is what's happening in this case. So the good news here is that doing some physical eye therapy re-education where you're doing some exercises to increase visual coordination, peripheral vision, visual relaxation, These are really time-tested exercises that can help change the situation and you can actually reduce your myopia, you can reduce your astigmatism. And the way I see physical eye therapy as it relates to, you know, post-LASIK is that it's the same thing as getting some type of physical therapy after you've had any kind of surgery. And... Surgeons tend to recommend physical therapy because there's an integration process that needs to happen once the surgeon has done their job. In fact, I don't really know of many surgeries that doctors do where physical therapy is not recommended afterwards, but not in eye care. So what you can do is you can go to my website and there's a section on eye exercise protocols and the one you would want to work with is the one for nearsightedness and it's a 90-day program it's about three exercises a day it's free and you can uh, do start doing those exercises and they're a combination of activities that will increase your flexibility your peripheral vision your visual coordination and uh, it will start to get you to integrate what the surgery did to your eyes with your mind and your brain and once you do that And once you start moving in that direction, you're definitely going to get clearer eyesight and better lubrication and moisturization in your eyes, and it's going to turn the tide for you. It's also important, just as a reminder, that you're getting really healthy nutrients. You know, I can easily say if you do the rainbow diet of vegetables, that you have a really good chance of feeding the eyes in a way that they need. You know, with all the screen time that we're all doing, we're running marathons every day and it's draining and stressing our eyes. We're not getting the nutrients that we need. Blue light is interfering with, you know, the the health of your eyes. So that's why you need to really boost your antioxidants, vitamin A, obviously, things like the carotenoids I talk about, lutein, zeaxanthin and astaxanthin. 
you know, you can make a morning smoothie where you add some ginger root and turmeric root, some kale, maybe uh, some lime or lemon to get some vitamin C. And then adding things like celery and cucumber and maybe uh, red bell pepper. You know, it's good to get the red, orange, yellow, green vegetables. Get it in your Vitamix, a little coconut water and hit blend. And that could be a, a drink that you could start doing variations of that on a daily basis. We need more antioxidants. You know, the eyes have one of the highest metabolic needs of the body. And carbohydrates and sugars are definitely a no-no. So you've got to reduce or eliminate those and at the same time, increase your healthy fats. That's really, really important in the overall scheme of things. So Jared, if you need more information, uh, email us at hello at drsamburn.com. And thanks so much for the question. All right, I'm, I'm flashing through here and there's a question from Denise and she's asking about drusen. So drusen is a, a series or a set of fatty deposits that start to accumulate uh, around the retina. Sometimes it'll even accumulate around the optic nerve. Uh, Denise, there's a, a video blog I did not too long ago. It's several minutes on what causes drusen and what are some things that you can do to neutralize or slow down the drusen uh, that may start forming. Bottom line is that as long as the drusen is staying away from the macula, which is the center part of the retina, and also the optic nerve, it's just something that the doctor watches. But, you know, when I think of drusen, I think about liver health, I think about cholesterol, I think about our fat metabolism, and that brings me to how well our liver and gallbladder are working. You know, I have seen over the years, people have difficulty uh, processing any kind of fat soluble vitamins or nutrients. And if they increase their bile salts after a meal, this can actually start increasing or improving their fat absorption. So in your case, maybe going to a functional medicine doctor or a naturopath, getting a really good blood panel, seeing what's happening with your liver and gallbladder, uh, also your digestive health, because all eye problems at some level start on a systemic and metabolic level. And there are many connections for gut health and eye health, for gut health and brain health, and so your fat metabolism, your cholesterol, this would be number one on my list. Number two would be the state of health of your visual function. In other words, how well you're focusing your two eyes, how well they're coordinating together. We call this the functional vision. And it's much more than eyesight. So you're going to have to either find a holistic optometrist, somebody who can test you beyond the eyesight and eye health. But the, the key is reducing the stress in your eyes, which will reduce your oxidative stress accumulating, which reduces inflammation. So inflammation tends to really drive drusen. And so, you know, hydrating the eyes more. This means using things like homeopathic eye drops daily, using MSM eye drops daily, maybe my MSM mist. And then in the evening, doing some compresses with maybe eye bright tea or golden seal, some ways that you're feeding your eyes on a hydration level. This helps reduce inflammation and indirectly, it could actually help uh, stave off some of the drusen that might be forming. Blue light is another factor involved. It's going to definitely increase the inflammatory situation in the retina so that you want to make sure that uh, you're, you know, you're reducing um, the blue light exposure either by getting a, a screen on the, on the digital device or blue blocking uh, glasses because blue light definitely is going to dry things out at the very least. I also think blue light can damage the eye tissue over time. So, you know, again, you need to do everything you can to protect your eyes because drusen is something that tends to live in a climate where there's inflammation, oxidative stress, dehydration, 
and uh, then then you're looking at you know your liver health which we talked about check out my video blog on drusen and you just need to type dr burn uh, optic drusen and it'll give you a lot of great tips one other note that i would say is that the retina is made up of about 50 percent of fatty acids so omega-3 is a really important uh, supplement that you want to take or you can get it in foods we don't produce omega-3 so um, you want to get those healthy fats in in the body in the eyes on the brain and dha and the epa and omega-3 is very very helpful so i wish you the best thank you so much for the question all right nicole is asking about glaucoma so glaucoma is a vascular disease and it starts in the eye we're either not producing enough fluid in the eye or the fluid has an impediment in being able to circulate properly Bottom line is that when the, the fluid is out of balance in the eyeball, this begins to attack the optic nerve. Glaucoma is called the silent thief. It steals your peripheral vision because it damages the optic nerve. So it's important to do things like ginkgo and taurine. These are really, taurine is a really great amino acid. Ginkgo is a, a, a great vascular support. Bilberry is another one for, for glaucoma. Uh, there's an herb that sometimes I will use to help eye pressure come down. It's called coleus, coleus, C-O-L-E-U-S. Uh, there's been small studies on the value of the herbal formula coleus as a way to bring down the eye pressure. I think acupuncture and craniosacral therapy could be really helpful. Lymphatic drainage, lymph health is very important with glaucoma. You know, I've seen uh, journal articles stating that Glaucoma can start in the brain and Alzheimer's can start in the eye and they kind of go together in terms of this vascular disease. So head trauma, eye trauma, these things tend to reduce ocular circulation. Dehydration tends to reduce ocular circulation. So the thing is, is that if you uh, start really paying attention to healthy antioxidants, that boost your, you know, your retina circulation, the microcapillaries, again, the, the carotenoids, lutein, zeaxanthin, and astaxanthin, and vitamin A is very important as well for the retina. And then the healthy fats and oils are really essential for optic nerve health. And then don't forget about my eye exercises. My eye, my eye exercises, like the end palm hum, that's the one where you rub your hands together, and you do about six or eight palming hums, delicious, moist, and it's, it's really a great way to de-stress your eyes. So it's pretty simple. It's, it's really thinking about how can you improve the circulation in the eye tissue. Reducing inflammation is another way that I would do that. You can certainly look on my website. My web store has got great uh, supplements saffron curcumin would be another one that i recommend for glaucoma my eye vitamin and probably the five percent msmi drops to be used uh, throughout the day i think all of those are very very supportive all right let's go to maggie she's asking about pterygium and saltzman's nodules they had she had them removed she's had a couple of eye surgeries what causes these how can i prevent them well think collagen so the eye is made of mostly collagen and water and so on, a, on an eye level, when we see things like pterygiums or uh, Salzman nodules, what's happening is, first of all, the eye is living in a dehydrated state, so you're not getting enough hydration. And then number two, collagen. What are some ways that you can increase your collagen health? And you can do it through your diet. You can do it through the MSM eye drops, uh, the hyaluronic eye drops castor oil massage. So in other words, you need to really boost the hydration aspect. And the thing about especially pterygium is they tend to, to grow over the eye when there's either, you know, extreme sun exposure, ultraviolet sun exposure, or there's just wind and dryness. If you're not living in the desert southwest, if you're living in a climate where there is some moisture and you're still getting these, then your inner climate 
is not balanced. And this is where, again, all of your mucous me membranes may be drying out. So fats and oils are so important. I love to eat an avocado a day. It's got lutein in it, healthy fats, <clears throat> and it's a great source of, of, of foods for the eyes, especially, you know, today with all the screen time we're doing. I don't know how much screen time you're doing, Maggie, <clears throat> but that's also going to be a, a, contrib a contributing factor. It's very, very important that you get about 30 to 60 minutes of natural sunlight every day. I think that <clears throat> we're told to be afraid of the sun. You don't have to go out in the middle of the day. You can wear a hat, but natural sunlight is also um, critically important. So without knowing more of your history, your medical history, I will say that collagen is uh, something that it's so important for the joints, the connective tissue. And when we start drying out in terms of our bodies, and the collagen is not as healthy, we get things like arthritis and joint pain. Well, it also affects the eyes quite profoundly, either by getting uh, floaters or things like pinguiculas or, or um, uh, Salzman's nodules or pterygiums, those kinds of things. So start bathing your eyes with these natural eye drops and do some of these things and you should see some improvement. All right, here's another que question, Lucinda. Uh, she's asking about an eye drop called Sananaga. And so this is from the Amazon. It's a, it's a plant-based eye drop. It's very, very strong. And I would not necessarily recommend it as a first choice of healing your eyes. It's, it's very intense and very extreme. You know, in any of these <clears throat> natural remedies, first of all, the most important thing is get a baseline on what is going on with your eyes. Get an eye exam, get your glaucoma checked, <clears throat> get your, your macula checked, your prescriptions, so you know what you're dealing with. You know, you don't have to necessarily follow all the doctor's recommendations, but you need to get a baseline so you know what you're dealing with. Sometimes what we tend to do is we, we go online and we start researching. We start seeing different things that, you know, I could do this and I can do that and I can do this. And, you know, if you can find a holistic practitioner who can see the big picture, who's integrative, doesn't need to be an eye doctor, but somebody who's integrative, who can help you sort out all the different aspects of your systemic health, your metabolic health, your energetic health. And these particular eye drops, though for a few people, they do create a miraculous, say, improvement. For most of us, they're too extreme. And because our eyes are in such a sensitive state to begin with, I mean, we're all stressed out to begin with, and our eyes are even more stressed out. So the bottom line is that you want to start adding things that are going to be supportive and make your eyes feel better. So um, I would hold off on that and I would, um, you know, I would try some more gentle things that, you know, that I present, that other, other doctors present, but get that baseline first so we know what we're dealing with. Okay, I'm going to take another question. This is about cataracts. So this is Jenny and she's 65 years old. And she was diagnosed with cataracts about three months ago. The right eye is more blurred than the left eye. And so she's asking whether or not it's too late or can she do some things to reverse cataracts. So the rule of thumb with cataracts is that um, if you can still see clear enough to do your daily activities, then what you can do is you can start a protocol to improve your lens health. Two ingredients that are essential for lens health are glutathione, the master antioxidant of the body, and vitamin C. For people that are developing cataracts, three things are going on. They're low in those 
antioxidants, glutathione and vitamin C. And number three, they may be eating too many carbs or sugars because sugar really accelerates cataracts. What a cataract is, is basically oxidative stress that starts accumulating in the lens of the eye. And so you can do a sublingual glutathione spray. You can do an eye drop called Oculamed, which you can get from a company called College Pharmacy. I would use my MSM 5% followed by the Oculamed eye drops. So you're working with it topically. And then I would really boost your antioxidants 2,000 milligrams of vitamin C, lots of antioxidants, glutathione. Um, Designs for Health makes a very, very uh, effective glutathione sublingual spray. Most of us are, are deficient in glutathione, and we get that from our cruciferous vegetables. Selenium helps in the absorption and production of glutathione. So make sure you're, you're getting those things, uh, a good vitamin A, maybe a good eye nutrient supplement. Blue blockers would also probably be helpful to you. And you'll know within a couple months, if the cataract starts going away, you will see it. And you know, it can go either way. I do have a high percentage of people who are able to stave off cataracts, but there are other people where the cataract just keeps growing and keeps growing and they have to get the surgery. So give it a try. It's certainly worthwhile. And uh, yeah, there you go. So v- uh, somebody's asking about a vegan collagen supplement. I believe there is one out there. I can't recall it right now, but depending on where you live, if you go to your local health food store, uh, I know I've seen vegan collagen supplements that you can take. So Kathy is asking a question about dry eye, dry eye syndrome. Well, dry eye is such a big problem today. And the reason is, is because we're staring. We're staring. We're staring right now into our screen. We're not blinking enough. We don't blink enough, first of all. Second of all, our eyelids may be inflamed. They may be irritated. We don't know. But the eyelids are the place where the glands live that produce the tears that create good coverage of the cornea. We actually have two types of glands. We have a meibomian gland, which is by the eyelashes, and we have a lacrimal gland, which is higher up, um, higher up on the eye and the eyelid. In any case, if there's any inflammation in the eyelids, this is going to impede the, the tear production mechanism, so your corneas are going to dry out faster. We also have to deal with the fact that in the tear production, if you've got inflammation in the eyelids, you may not be producing the right combination of tears, and this can create an increase in evaporation. So you do get the tears, but they evaporate quickly. So you can start on a symptomatic level and a topical level where you're hydrating your eyes throughout the day. You really have to start doing that. You know, right now here in New Mexico, we're dealing with some wildfires already, and I'm getting lots of calls from people their, their eyes are dry, they're getting red, and it's from the smoke in the air. So we're asking people to increase the application of the natural eye drops. There are a lot of good ones out on the, on the market. There are Hyla tears, which are hyaluronic eye tears. There's um, Similiacin or Optique. Those are homeopathic eye drops, very soothing. And then there are the MSM eye drops. So you want to use eye drops throughout the day, maybe every hour, every two hours. Create a loading dose so you're hydrating more. Next, I would do something in the evening to see if you could support better eyelid health. This could be something like uh, a castor oil eye massage on the eyelids or maybe doing some kind of herbal compresses. You can do warm, you can do cool. Uh, Golden Seal is a really good one. Eye Bright is another good one. Chamomile tea is another good one. So you want to stay away from the pharmaceuticals because they're going to dry your eyes out even more and they suppress your immune system. So you want to do those things topically. You've got to boost your uh, omega-3s, probably 2,000 to 3,000 milligrams a day of a good omega-3. And then, of course, you know, making sure you're, you're eating well, an anti-inflammatory diet. 
Some people do paleo, some people do Mediterranean, some people do intermittent fasting. These are all ideas, you know, based on, you know, the, the degree of the dryness. We have to bring in our thyroid health. I think thyroid health can definitely be a player in creating dry eye syndrome. And then, of course, gut health. You know, what, what's the state of our gut, the state of our microbiome? And, um, you know, these are, these are good places to start. And then my dry eye, eye exercise program. Doing eye exercises every day is a powerful way for you to be proactive in improving your vision. I've been doing this type of work for 35 years and I have seen such miraculous changes with people who have done my physical eye therapy program, case after case after case. Now you have to apply yourself, you have to commit to it, you have to be diligent, you have to be, you know, you have to be willing to show up every day, but if you are, you can change the patterns in your eyes. And the eyes originate from the brain. So the brain and the eyes have a relationship that go way back to a prenatal period where all the structures of the eyes come from the brain. Therefore, there is the potential for the eyes to improve, just like the brain improves when we stimulate and use it. You know, the eyes are only an outer representation of the brain. So that's my hot take on dry eye and um, I think I'm being called so I'm gonna have to sign off here please send me your questions hello at drsamburn.com I'll do my best to answer them either in person or on my podcast and check out my eye mist my MSM 15% eye mist take advantage of the sale all right everybody I look forward to seeing you next week thanks for joining me tonight have a good evening Thank you for listening. I hope you learned something from the Eye Clarity podcast show today. If you enjoyed the episode, make sure to subscribe on iTunes or Spotify and leave a review. See you here next time.